So I hope you got a chance to try a few of these um, and that you are going to watch this video and make corrections to your work and make sure that you're ready for your quiz next class. The quiz will look just like this, okay? So here we have four different functions, h of x, g of x, k of x, and f of x. So when you go to answer these, you just have to make sure that you look at the correct one. It's not hard, but you have to look at the correct letter. So this is g of zero. We're gonna look at g. We're gonna find zero on x and it matches three. So zero gives you three. This one says h, so I need to look at this graph, h of x, h of negative four. So I'm gonna find negative four on the x-axis. I went negative four, one, two, three, four. Find where that hits the graph and that hits on the y-axis at two. All right, this one says k of negative two. So I'm gonna use the calculator for this one. So you gotta hold on a second while I pull up Desmos. Sorry, I should have had this ready to go. Right, let me share my screen. I'm gonna go over to the calculator and I'm gonna type it exactly like it looks. K of X equals, and it is X squared. Again, the way you get that exponent is shift six. It's capital six. Um, so X squared minus three X minus four, come down to the next box down. It's K of, Negative two is what it says on the paper. Sorry, I can't have the paper and the calculator at the same time. And it tells you your answer right there is six. So that one is six. This says f of three. So we're looking at this one, f of x, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna type in f of x equals five uh, x plus three, exactly like it says there. And then I'm gonna type f of three. It tells me my answer is 18. So when you have a table or a graph, you have to like look at it and see where it matches up. For these ones, you can just put it in the calculator. Now this one's backwards. It says find x if f of x equals 23. So again, it's f of x. You have to make sure you're looking at this one. You're going to plug in 23 for the f of x. So it's 23 equals 5x plus 3. And then you have to solve the equation. So we're going to subtract 3, get 20 equals 5x, divide by 5 and we get that x is four. And then this one, same thing, it's backwards. Find x if g of x equals seven. So you have to make sure you look at g. Now I don't have to actually do any work like I did for this one. We want g of x to be seven. So I'm gonna look at the g of x column where it says seven, and that gives me negative three for x. All right, so those ones went with those functions up here. Um, now we're moving on to other stuff. So we're not using those functions anymore. What is the formula used to find slope? So you just need to know this formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, you subtract your y values, subtract your x values. You just need to memorize that. Now we're gonna use these two points and plug them into the formula. So if you do not wanna label, that's fine. If it helps you, then do that. This is x1, y1, because it's the first point, it gets ones. This is the second point, so it gets twos. And then you just plug them in, y2 minus y1. So it's negative nine minus negative one. And then on the denominator, you're gonna subtract the x's, x2 minus x1, so negative five minus three. And you can put that in the calculator exactly like it looks. Let me share my screen. So it is gonna be uh, negative nine minus negative one. And then I need to divide the whole thing by negative five minus three. And so it gives me one. Now, if this comes out to a decimal, there will be a little button right here that can turn it back into a fraction, but this came out to a whole number, so it's just one. Same thing with this one. If you wanna label, if that helps you, then you can do that. First point, second point, and we're going to plug in y2 minus y1, so 8 minus 8 over negative 2 minus 4. And I'm going to just type that in the calculator exactly like it looks. 8 minus 8 over uh, negative 2 minus 4, and it tells me 0. So what that means, since it's a zero slope, is if you did a graph, it would be horizontal. It would be going this way.
Right here, we're going to look at the graph and find the slopes. You need to find pretty points, ones that land on nice whole numbers. So I see I've got one there and I've got one there. So I'm going to draw in my triangle. This went down three and then over four. So negative three fourths. So just how much down and how much over. If the line was going up, it would be positive. This is a vertical line that is undefined undefined slope. Again, this way is zero, this way is undefined. Now we're going to graph the line ourselves. We want to go through the point negative two, negative four, which is going to be right here. Um, negative two for x, negative four for y. Again, if you forget how to plot a point, let me just show you in the calculator, you can make the calculator plot it for you. Negative two comma negative four and see it puts the point right there. So if you forget, you can always type it into Desmos. And then it says our slope is 2 fifths. M is the letter we use for slope. M is slope 2 fifths. That means we're going to go up 2 over 5 from this point. So up 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can't fit any more points. You want to fit as many as you can, but no more are going to fit on this graph. So that's good enough. All right, here we're going to go through the point 4, negative 1. So you go 4 for x, negative 1 for y. Zero slope is going to be horizontal, so this way. Now it says show at least three, oh, points ended up over here. Show at least three points. I mean, you can plot as many as, as you want, but it's a horizontal line, so it's going to go through all those points. All right, given that a slope of a line is 1 third, one of the points is 0, 2. So let's plot that, 0, 2 going to be right there, 0 for x and then 2 for y. Again, if you're not sure, type it in Desmos. The slope is 1 third. We want to find two more points on the line. So from that point, we're going to go up 1 over 3. And so that's the first point I'm going to write over here. We want to write it as an ordered pair. So that point is 3, 3. Now, if I go any further, I'm going to be off the grid. At this time, we are conducting all right, sorry, I just had to pause the video while they were doing an announcement. Um, okay, so we started at 0, 2. We went up 1 over 3. This is the first point I wrote. If I go up 1 over 3 again, I'm going to be off the grid. So instead, I'm going to go down 1 and left 3. So we'll go this direction. And that's the other point that I'm going to put over here. So again, you want to write it as an ordered pair. And this point is negative 3, 1. So you start where you're told to start. Do the slope and then list out your extra points that you find that are on the line. You can connect them if you want to. This is just here for you to use to help you see what's going on. All right, and then here we're going to um, do the slope from the table. So we're going to look at what's happening with y in this pattern. Uh, 24, 12, 0, negative 12, negative 24. It's going down 12 each time. And then negative 7, negative 4, uh, negative 1, 2, 5. It's going up 3 each time. That usually goes okay. The thing is people get this backwards. Just make sure you put y over x. It's negative 12 over 3. And then if it reduces, you should do that. It's negative 4 over 1. Or you can just say negative 4. These are both okay. Whichever one of these you want to put is fine.